What's going on guys? Welcome back. And as you guys can read from the title, we're going to be letting LMB20 draft my team. So basically, let me go ahead and show you guys what it's going to be all about. This is not actually going to be like the full run for it, but this is pretty much what we're doing. We're going to be going into a fantasy draft. As you guys can see right now, I got 14th in the draft. And once you're at the opening screen for the fantasy draft, we go ahead and hit square and then auto sim the entire draft. So if this was the team I was going to be going with, I would have Jordan Yamamoto right now as my ace. That's the type of AI I'm going to have draft my team. Yeah, I'm nervous for this. I'm not excited. We had pick 14 in the draft pretty much. We got Ozzy Albies, Lorena, Nelson Cruz, Carlos Correa, Eddie Rosario, Eduardo. I mean, the offense, not horrible, but let me take a look at this pitch rotation. Yeah, look at that right there. And this is the type of AI that's going to draft my entire team. An AI that would have Jordan Yamamoto as the ace of my team. Yeah, that type of AI is going to draft my team. I'm so, I'm so not looking forward to this. But you know what? You guys wanted to see it, so I hope you guys do enjoy it. If you guys do, leave a like on it. Subscribe down below. I really appreciate it that and here we are let's just go ahead and hop back into this this one's gonna be for real this time so please over the show do not screw me up here but since i want to make my team random you know what hold up wait one second and since i got all the masks that i pretty much could ever want like right over here i might as well use one to go ahead and blindfold myself and pick my team this is about to be horrible all right here we go straight up tucked it into the head i cannot see a single that's my mic okay i cannot see a single freaking thing let's go ahead and pick this team now all righty i'm gonna go ahead and pick it in probably what seven seconds let's go seven six five four three two who do we get who we getting? We actually got the Brewers. Okay, let's do it. I'm down. Mask goodbye. I'll see you in like probably six more months whenever I go back outside. And there we go. We got the Brewers though. Okay, and I'll central. I mean, that could possibly work if we get a good draft that is. But still, I mean, we got a lot of teams we could trade with. We got a lot of different people that we could possibly fill in if we need to. Okay, yeah, let's see what happens. And since I didn't say this earlier, the main goal for me right now is to win a World Series with the team that owned the show drafts me. Now that's what I'm trying to do. I don't know if that's gonna actually happen, but I gotta go for it. So here we go. Just please tell me we get a good pick and we got 13th. Wow, okay, so basically like from the pre-run, we got 14th, this one we got 13th. The pre-run, we got some garbage. So this, please owned the show, do not screw me up here. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one with you guys. So hit square, go down, hit X. Oh baby, what's gonna happen? I do see we got Fernando though. I saw that we got Fernando Tatis Jr. Please tell me we got more of that. Oh my goodness. And we got the ace of Clayton Kershaw. Holy crap. So I think it's pretty safe to say that this team's gonna be 100% better than the Rays team that we just had, which I'm so down for because if I had to rebuild that team, like the Rays team that I had, that would have sucked so much. I would have spent three years just straight up building the pitch rotation. So please tell me, I will not have to do that with this team. Come on. The first thing that I think I gotta check is the pitch rotation. We already see the ace of Clayton Kershaw, but who's the rest of the four in the entire bullpen? Let's take a look. And come on, are you kidding me? This is what I see when I open this thing up. We got Jose Quintana, who's not bad, but Henderson Alvarez, who could either be good, bad, I really don't know. I haven't seen this guy pitch since 2013. <laughs> Caleb Smith, who could be a complete hit or miss, and then Nate Pearson, who in real life is insanely good, but in this game, the guy does not do well at all. And then the bullpen, we got Jalen Beeks, Goody. Oh no, Phil Madden, Fernando Salas. Dylan, which is probably one of the best ones here. Edgar as well is pretty good, but then we got Edwin Diaz, Mr. Blow Saves himself. I had a lot of high hopes going into this, okay? I really did. I had somewhat of high hopes because I saw Clayton Kershaw and Fernando Tatis Jr. So please tell me that this stupid lineup is gonna save me from this. Come on, take me home. Elm of the show, don't don't screw me over twice, please. Okay, that's a little bit better. That is a lot better, actually. I'll take it. It's not necessarily the best, but it is definitely a lot better than the pitch rotation, so I am down. We got Cesar Hernandez. We also got David Bodie. We also got Howie Kendrick, Paul Goldschmidt. Okay, definitely not bad from the top. Then we got Fernando, Ozuna, Max Kepler, Salvador Perez, and then Will Myers. Okay, I mean, don't get me wrong. It definitely needs a little bit of work, but not nearly as much as the pitch rotation, so I am down. On the bench, we got Gerard. We also got Garcia, Hernan Perez, and Keon Broxton. I mean, overall, it could definitely have been a lot worse, so I will take whatever I can get, but my question is what the heck is on with the show ranking us at? Because if I had to guess personally, this really is not like a top, top team. I could definitely see us making the postseason. It's just like, I don't know if we're in that top 10. That's all I'm saying. We got a very, very good offense, but that pitch rotation, that bullpen definitely brings us down quite a bit. And also real quick, I got to point this out. The only lefty in our bullpen is Jalen Beeks. That's it. So that's definitely got to change at some point. They're straight up trying to ruin me with this thing. Oh my God. Also the lineup, completely righty dominant. Holy crap. The only two guys that don't hit righty are Hernandez and Kepler. That's it. Besides Dyson, but he's on the bench, so it really doesn't even matter. We actually got an ungodly amount of righties on this team. Holy crap, I gotta fix that. Either way, back to the original question. Where are we ranked in LB The Show? I want you guys to comment that down below. I'm guessing 13th. That seems like a pretty decent number. We're not completely insane like the Yankees, Dodgers, whatever. But we're not like Tigers level, you know what I'm saying? So let's see where we rank up. We are... 
That's gotta be a glitch. That's gotta be fake. You're kidding. You're absolutely kidding me. They should have ranking us at first. What type of garbage is this game on? Oh, they knew that they drafted this team. So they 100% were just like, yo, let's just give them the first overall. You're telling me that this team, the Brewers, are the best team in the MLB right now? I've never seen so much cat from this game. And I played this game a whole bunch. So you better believe I've seen a lot of it. But I've never seen this much. And again, the offense is kind of goaded, but not first overall. You can't have an entire pitching staff like this and be first overall. That just does not happen. So I'm just going to pretend that that's not even first overall because frankly it's not like let's be honest it's just not and let's see what else happens and you know what since we're technically first overall i'm gonna go ahead and see what like second third fourth what those teams are looking like because honestly with this entire league being jumbled up we could possibly be the best team in the league it's just for me right now i highly doubt that but honestly you never know so let's take a look let's try to find second let's try to find the second place team who do you guys think it's actually gonna be definitely gonna be some team in the al for sure and it's actually the red Sox. wow okay let's real quick go ahead and see what the heck the red Sox are working with all right so on the red Sox right now they got Chapman, they got Ryu, Kiermaier, Mondesi, Sonny Gray, Workman, Kingery. What? That is not a second place team. I'm sorry, that just isn't. This game legitimately is on all the drugs right now. All right, well, second place team, load of garbage. What's the third best team? I thought I saw it up here. Yeah, there we go, the Mets. All right, perfect, let's check the Mets real quick. I mean, the Mets gotta be a little bit better, right? Let's take a look. Not really. Are we technically the best team? If so, this thing is broken. Like, we need to rework this entire thing, run it back, like, what the heck is going on type thing. I'm actually mind blown that our team is technically the best in the MLB. You know what? I'll just take it at this point. This game's proven it to me that they don't know how to rank teams, so whatever. Let's just go ahead and get this thing going. Let's go ahead and get 2020 started, and I'm probably going to be making quite a few trades at the trade line. okay? Probably going to be doing that for sure. I'll most likely be seeing you guys over there. Literally one minute later. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up. We're at July 3rd right now, and I got to point something out, all right? Right, I gotta do it. My guy Henderson Alvarez right now, who's not pitched consistently since 2014, six whole years ago, by the way, is posting up in the MLB in 2020, a 3.27. Now I know that only the show really is nowhere near close to like the actual MLB, but yo, just take a chance on the man or something. If the dude's got the velo, go for it, honestly. Like, for real, what the heck? I mean, besides that, we got Kershaw, of course, doing good. Jose Quintana being fantastic right now. Caleb Smith not really doing the greatest, who would have thought. And then Nate Pearson, kind of sucking. Again, I told you guys. I've had so many Blue Jays fans come on my neck for saying this. The guy does not do good in this game, okay? In this game, he doesn't do good. It's legitimately just a fact. I've played hundreds and hundreds of franchises. This dude's maybe done good like two or three times. And when he does do good, you have to wait till like 2026, 2027. Normally, I don't wait that long because I'm already winning the World Series by that time. But still, this might end up being a guy that we have to trade if he does not do better. Because again, for a first overall team, we can't be having somebody that's not going to be doing consistently very, very good. Besides the rotation, how the heck is our offense doing? We got Gerard Dyson for some reason being our DH. Bold move. Okay, let's see if it works out. I mean, this is not the guy that you'd envision for your DH. So I'm probably going to switch him out real quick. But either way, Hernandez doing good as always. This guy's honestly kind of a if you guys need a very, very good second baseman or third baseman, shortstop, whatever the heck you need. Pretty much anything besides first base in the infield, go with Hernandez. I swear to God, the guy's insane. Then at first base, Paul Goldschmidt. This dude's so insanely good still. You love to see it, dude. Just being a complete god against lefties. Not to mention, it's a 303 with 23 bombs. I love this dude. Also, side note, my area is getting hammered right now. This rain is not joking. So if I lose power, I'm gonna be pissed, okay? This rain is not letting up. So if I lose power, I'm not gonna be happy because this is going pretty good so far. If I end up losing power, like the power just kind of flickers a little bit, I am not gonna be happy because this is going so insanely good. So fingers crossed, power, I swear to God, just stay on, please stay on. Either way, moving on, we got Fernando Tatis Jr., of course, doing so insanely good. And right field, we got Kepler, who's, by the way, our only lefty bat, pretty much. But the guy's absolutely killing it. 89 overall with a 312 and 20 home runs. Then in the left, we got Marcelo Zuna, not really doing the greatest. Then Salvador Perez, doing pretty solid. Okay, I like to see that, Salvi. Let's go. The guy did not play in 2019, so it's good to see him back and actually doing pretty good. Then in second base, we got David Bodie, just a 336 out of nowhere. You love to see that. And the Will Myers, kind of sucks. Okay. Again, like I said, we got to make a couple trades. I never said this team was anywhere near perfect. So I'm thinking trades is most likely what we're going to go ahead and do next. Alrighty, here we are. July 31st. Let's go ahead and make a little bit of trades. So I think the first thing that I really want to go ahead and try to do is going to be getting rid of Will Myers. And I mean, to be honest, he's not doing completely horrible, but for a guy that is getting paid like $12 million this year, I'm good. Okay. I'm straight up good. So that, in my opinion, is by far the biggest thing. If we can get rid of him, we free up a bowl of cash that we could use in a bunch of other things. So I will take anybody. I could straight up take a sub sandwich from Subway at this point. Just give me somebody for him. Gotta go ahead and go 
with the least amount of money real quick. Who the heck is that gonna be? It actually looks like there's quite a few ties. We got we got the A's coming in at 70. We got the Marlins coming in at 70. And that's actually it. There's only two teams. So basically, it really doesn't even matter. I'm going with the Marlins. Whatever. So now we got that done. That's 100% fine by me. Now here we go with the next thing. Do I wait to see if my dude Nate Pearson can actually bring it back in this game to make him look like his actual self? in real life. Do I actually go ahead and wait for that? Because this man in real life is so insanely good and such a bright star for the Blue Jays. Or do I just go ahead and get rid of him for an absolute ace and maybe a bullpen piece? Honestly, I'm kind of thinking that ace and that bullpen piece, okay? Gotta be real. I'm kind of thinking about that a lot more than keeping Nate Pearson. So I'm just gonna shop around a little bit, try to see if I can make something happen. Oh, this is it 100%. We gotta do this. We got Nate Pearson and Jeremy Hellickson going over to the Rangers for Rodriguez. We got Marcus Walden and Brett Suter all coming over. We need that lefty arm in the bullpen for Brett Suter. We need that upgrade to Marcus Walden. And we need that ace level arm of Eduardo Rodriguez. So there we are. Let's go ahead and do this. Perfect. That is beautiful right now. All right, now we just got to make one more trade and we are going to be all set to go. And wow, that was a lot easier than I thought. Okay. Hansa Maeda, a fantastic ready, going to be coming over for Caleb Smith. Let's do it, baby. There we are. Now we are for real in a very, very good position. So there we are. Just from that, this team is looking so much better. I think Suter and Beaks are going to work wonders. I think Walden's going to do very good. And I hope that Rodriguez can maintain what the heck he's been doing. And then for the offense and replacement of Will Myers, we got Trent back on the team, baby. There we are. Now let's go ahead and finally get the second half of the season underway. I'll see you guys around the end of the year and we should be in a very, very good spot. Let's take a look. Also, red alert real quick. Last two weeks of the season, we got 93 wins. We got more than seven games left. Could we possibly go on a gigantic win streak and get over 100 wins off of a team that only the show drafted me? Let's take a look. Can we do it? Come on. We're three games off. We're two games off. We actually did it. 162. Oh my God, this game's cracked. For real. What? I mean, we did a couple trades, but overall, this team was fully built by the actual game. What the heck, bro? Let's just go ahead and go through it real quick. Top to bottom, Howie Kendrick, very good. Hernandez, again, like I said, an underrated glitch. Paul Goldschmidt just had one of those fantastic Goldschmidt years. Let's go. Fernando, fantastic, dude. Max Kepler, 36 home runs and a 288. Fantastic. Salvador Perez, he's back in full force. David Bowie fantastic and then Trent you know not horrible pretty much pulling up a Will Myers type stat but just for you know like 11 million dollars less so I will definitely take that let's go baby the lineup looked absolutely fantastic now let's go ahead and take a look at this rotation baby Clayton Kershaw just an absolute robot just an absolute machine this guy went crazy Eduardo now definitely had a lot better of a first half with the Rangers but still did very very good with us so I will take that Kenta Maeda again pretty much the same thing had a better first half but again I'll take it Henderson Alvarez stayed consistent through the entire year. Let's go. And Jose Quintana, 19 and eight with 169 strikeouts. Nice. And a 3.22 ERA, but still bullpen complete cheat code. Also, what the heck is this? Edwin Diaz. Does the man just have a case of the yips up in New York or what? Because I really don't understand why he does so bad with the Mets, but we bring him to Cheeseville over here in Milwaukee and the man does fantastic. So is he pulling like a sunny gray where the guy just can't pitch in New York? It's possible. Just think about it. It's possible. I'd actually like to see that though. If the Mets actually trade him to a different team, I want to see if he goes back to old Edwin Diaz type form. Yo, that'd be mad interesting. Like for real, that'd be mad interesting. The dude just pulls an absolute sunny gray, just gets out of New York and does fantastic. That'd be funny. Also, I didn't check the award, so that's my bad, but we got Paul Goldschmidt winning National League MVP. And then we also got Delivery Man of the Year going to Edwin Diaz. I mean, dude, what the heck? All right, LDS versus the Braves right now. Clayton Kershaw going up against John Gray for game one. Now, Clayton, I swear to God, if postseason Kershaw shows up to the Brewers, I am not going to be happy. All right, I'm going to be pissed off. So you best be on your A game right now, my dude. We're trying to win a ring. Let's go. Game one. Won that one, two to one. Perfect. All right, Rodriguez versus Charlie Morton. Wow. Morton on the Braves already. Well, let's see what happens. Rodriguez, Morton, game two. Won that one for nothing. Oh my God. Now we got Maeda versus Madison Bumgarner. This should be a good game. Game three. Let's see what happens. And we lost that. Okay. Makes sense. That actually was not Mad Bum. That was Austin Voth. Okay. All right. I've seen a boatload of you guys in the comments tell me to get Austin. And you guys might be right. This dude pitched six innings out of the pen and just completely annihilated me. I legitimately might have to get this guy in the future rebuild or something. That's actually gross. Oh my God. All right, either way, game four, Kershaw versus Mad Bum. This should be a good game, okay? Forget what I said about game three. This should be a good game right here. Mad Bum, Kershaw, just the battle of two freaking goats. Also, am I dyslexic or something or does Clayton Kershaw have two strikeouts out of seven innings? That just doesn't happen for my man. So what is going on? Two strikeouts out of everything? Okay, let's see what happens. Game four, won that one. Perfect, we're moving on. But the man had two strikeouts, just straight up two out of seven innings. Like what? 
Either way, let's just go ahead and move on. Rodriguez versus Trevor Bauer right now for game one against Arizona. Wasn't Bauer like drafted to Arizona or something? I feel like he was. If so, it's actually pretty cool that the game brought him back, but still, I swear to God, this guy was drafted by the Diamondbacks. Let's see. 2011 Diamondbacks first round third pick. There we go. He was the third overall pick. God dang. All right. Well, Jesus. Rodriguez, Bauer, who the heck's going to win this game? It looks like us. All right, perfect. Game two, Maeda versus Brandon Woodruff. Wow. All right, we got to beat them. We got to beat Woodruff. Come on. Let's do it. We won. Perfect. Okay, move on. Game three, Kershaw versus Stroman. This should be somewhat simple. All right, come on. Won that one five to one. Perfect. And then Henderson Alvarez is going to be pitching in the postseason. Probably the first time the guy's actually going to be pitching in the postseason. So fingers crossed. Come on, Henderson. Don't suck. Come on. Let's see. Four nothing. Oh my God, this team's goaded. The guy pitched seven innings of just complete flames. Let's go, Henderson. I love to see that. Now we're facing LA for the World Series. By the way, if we win this, we're going to be doing like a dynasty type thing. But still, I'm definitely not going to try to get too ahead of myself because we definitely could lose against this team. Milwaukee versus the Angels right now in 2020. This is for all the marbles right here. Not to mention our first. First ever World Series win. So a lot of pressure is riding on my dude Clayton Kershaw's shoulders. Let's see how he does against LA. Come on, baby. Game one, Kershaw versus Alex Wood. Let's see what happens. And won that one five to three. Game two coming up, Rodriguez versus Garrett Richards. Come on, won that one, one nothing, wow. Also, look at Rodriguez, 22.2 innings, 29 strikeouts, and a 0.4 on the ERA. Not a four, not a 1.4, not a 2.4 a 0.4. Just a complete goat right there. If he doesn't win MVP, I don't know what's going on. Game three, Maeda versus Aaron. Come on. Lost that one. God dang it. Aaron's on fire, by the way. What the heck? Game four, Alvarez versus Colin McHugh, who's also on fire. But my guy Henderson is so much better. Let's go. Won that one. And then with hopefully the last game of the postseason, we got Clayton Kershaw going up against Anthony. Let's get it, baby. I'm for sure going up for this one. Let's go. All right, here we go, Brewers. This is the time that we got to shine, baby. This is it right here. Let's go. Don't let up on the gas. There we go. David Bowie, perfect. Took the one run lead early in this game. Don't let up off that gas pedal, dude. You guys have been going on fire this entire time. Let's keep it going. Hernandez out into the total with another solo bomb in the top of the fifth, making it two nothing. And they're actually coming back a little bit because my dude, what? Jeff Bandy? Jeff Bandy hit a bomb. Okay. Let's just go ahead and keep it going. Just guys score some runs or something or not. Matt Olson tying the game up. Okay. All right. Guys, we got Grant Dayton in here now. I need some fire here. There we go. Hernandez. Again, two home runs on the day for my man Hernandez. A two-run bomb putting us two runs ahead, four to two. Holy crap. Top of the ninth right now. Just got completely shut down already. Clayton Kershaw going to the bottom of the ninth. In game what, five, four? I think game four. No, actually wait, we lost one, so game five. Either way. Bottom of the ninth versus Nelson Cruz, and Nelson Cruz completely smashes lefties. Even though the guy got a minus 20, so never mind, hold up. This could actually be pretty good. Clayton, come on, get him out, please. There we go, that's a fly out. That's Triple Cabrera. Got the ground out, and then we're going in for Mason Williams against Clayton Kershaw. Oh my God, it's happening. Oh my God, and we got the alternates on. This is about to be beautiful. Here we go. Mason Williams, I really don't even know who the heck you are, so this should be somewhat easy. Let's just go ahead and try to strike the guy out real quick. Just go ahead and win that ring. Get back to the clubhouse and celebrate, baby. Let's go, Kershaw. Let's go with the change up down low. Possibly like at the knees a little bit. This should be good. Okay, got him chasing. Perfect. Now we're going up and in. Hide cheddar. Let's go. Wisconsin, baby. Got him. Oh my goodness. There we are. I did not think this was actually going to go as good as it did. But in the first season of Elm the Show drafting our team, we win the World Freaking Series. The World Series. Not just like an LDS or whatever. The World Series with a team that Elm the Show drafted us. Like, bruh. Dude, what? Well, now we definitely got to run this thing back. Let's make it two for two. Just look at this though. Marcelo Zuna. High knees, baby. Oh my God. I swear that happened like a couple rebuilds back. I think it was like Jordan Alvarez doing high knees or something. I don't know why that's a celebration, but whatever. The coaches, all that hard work. And tell me that's Gerard Dyson. Tell me that's Gerard freaking Dyson. Gerard Dyson and everybody on that team is raising the trophy. I'm so done. Also, the mic's saying hi because for some reason, this thing does not want to stay still. Look at this. Real quick, look, this thing does not stay still at all. It keeps moving. Like, bro, this thing is mad annoying. Look at this. Oh my God. Either way, won the World Series. Clayton Kershaw just on fire. Cesar Hernandez, completely killer as well. And like I said, let's just go ahead and get to the offseason and try to run this thing back for 2021. But look at that. Congratulations. The Brewers have won the World Series. Let's go, baby. All right, real quick before we actually get into the offseason, who the heck won the... Okay, hold on a minute. I was going to say the MVP and the World Series MVP. We already see the playoff MVP. And that's going to Trent Grisham. Are you out of your mind? Trent Grisham, the guy that the Brewers got rid of because he kind of fumbled... And the, what, wild card game? Pretty sure it was the wild card game. I mean, the guy completely, like, ruined the Brewers' chances in 2019 to actually make it into the actual postseason, but 
whatever. And we'll be the show ended up drafting him and he won the postseason MVP. Now, World Series MVP going to Salvador Perez. Dude, what? Like, what is this game right now? Salvi Perez out of everybody won the World Series MVP. I thought for sure. It was gonna be someone like Eduardo Rodriguez or somebody, but no. Salvador Perez straight up won the World Series MVP. Okay, now it's a good time to go ahead and get into this offseason. Holy crap. All right, well, after winning the World Series, there's really not much that we need, to be honest. It's just like one of those things of, like, how many of the guys in this team are gonna be doing the exact same thing for next year? I honestly don't know if it's gonna be a big amount. I mean, I certainly hope it's gonna be a big amount. I just have no freaking clue. I think I might go for one guy in the offense and probably one guy for the bullpen, but besides that, I'm keeping everything as it is. Cause I mean, again, we won a freaking World Series. There's not much that we really gotta do besides that, but still. Quick, let's go ahead and go for these two guys real quick. Real quick, the first guy that I wanna go ahead and go for is gonna be Kirby Yates out of the bullpen. I think he's gonna be fantastic for us out of the bullpen. I mean, the guy could be like the closer, middle reliever. It really doesn't matter with him because he could be anything. So I'm thinking getting someone like Kirby Yates is gonna be a very, very good idea. And then second base, the guy that I really want to get for second base is actually DJ LeMahieu. Don't get me wrong, Howie Kendrick is fantastic. But if I'm being 100% legit, I would rather have DJ LeMahieu. So I'm going to try to get him. I really don't know exactly if I'm going to be able to, but I'm definitely trying. So let's see, 65 million over three years. That's beating the Pirates offer. Let's hope that we get him. All right, here we go. We only got two guys that we really want. Let's see if we get him. We got Kirby Yates. But do we get DJ LeMayhew? And we do, baby. Okay, perfect. That's all we needed. That's legitimately all we needed. So by November 28th, we are done with the entire offseason. That's pretty freaking solid. Let's go ahead and get into 2021 and try to run this World Series all the way back in 2021. All right, here we go. 2021, the lineup is looking pretty much the exact same besides DJ LeMayhew. The exact same thing for the rotation and the bullpen. The only thing that's different is now that we got Kirby Yates. Also, not a single lefty in that bullpen. Okay, okay that's kind of an issue, issue real quick. Send down my dude Nick Goody real fast and bring back Jalen Beeks. What the heck? Now we're looking a lot better. Now we're fine, but oh my God. All right, here we go. Like I said, we're going to need a little bit more luck in 2021 because I don't know exactly if all these guys are going to be as consistent as they were in 2020, but we're here to find out. So let's take a look. I'll see you guys most likely around the trailer line and let's see how good this team can do. 569 seconds later. All right, now we're back July 31st of 2021. We're 65 and 44, so still doing very, very good. And based off what I'm seeing right now everybody's kind of doing the exact same like everybody's staying consistent which which was my biggest fear coming into 2021 so that's kind of a big w and a gigantic stress reliever off my shoulders now the only thing is i do have to make one trade because jose quintana has kind of lost it a little bit he's posting up a 5.5 that is not going to work well if we're trying to win another world series so we definitely got to go ahead and get somebody new in here the thing is do i know who the heck we're gonna get that's a gigantic no so we got to check what's going on wait a minute wow there we go all right that worked out a lot easier than i thought jose quintana george Kirby and Steven going over to the Nats for Lucas Giolito, who by the way is posting up a 2.69. Nice. Out of 137 innings with, I think, yeah, 161 strikeouts. That's kind of disgusting. So I will take this six foot six god. So now we got Lucas Giolito on this team. That is looking insanely fire. Let's just go ahead and get into the second half, honestly, before I screw something up. Let's go. I will see you guys at the postseason at the end of the year. We should still be in first place. We should still be pretty much exactly where we were last time. And we should be, if I'm correct, winning this division once again, two years in a row. So let's see what happens. We got one full month left. And I'm trying to win over 100 games. Last year, we won 100 games. We got a couple upgrades. I'm trying to win like maybe 103, 104, maybe. Let's see what the heck we could do. We're getting very, very close. Come on. Come on. Okay, won one more game. I mean, still a W, but still. Only one game for all the upgrades that we got, especially spending like probably close to $25 million more. That's not necessarily the greatest, but whatever. What are you going to do? Either way, let's go ahead and check the lineups real quick. We got Howie Kendrick still doing fire. David Bodie, fantastic. Paul Goldschmidt, again, such a god. Fernando Tatis Jr., again, such a god. The only thing is for him, he definitely didn't do as good as last year, but still. I mean, Fernando, you have a bad season, you still hit 30 bombs, so whatever. And then going down to Max Kepler, out of 254 at-bats, I'm guessing the guy was injured, had a 370. A 370. That's Tony Gwynn type numbers with 21 bombs and 55 RBIs. I will take that every day of the week. Just keep going. Marcelo Zuna, again, not the greatest, whatever. I mean, still okay, but the average is well below MLB average, so whatever. DJ LeMayhew for $21 million. I was hoping for a lot better, but whatever. What are you going to do? Some things just don't work out. Salvador Perez, again, pretty solid for a catcher. And then Trent, very, very good. Rotation of bullpen. How are we looking? Kershaw, fantastic. Giolito, fantastic. Eduardo, very, very good. Henderson Alvarez. 
Alvarez came back pretty strong. And then Kent's Maeda, very, very solid from him, especially being the number five starter. So that's pretty solid. Bullpen, Marcus Walden, pretty solid. I mean, again, the 4.3, not the greatest, but for a guy that's going to be our long reliever, that's not horrible. Then we got Michael Feliz, 120 strikeouts, by the way, and a 2.78. Then we got Jalen Beeks doing pretty solid. Edwin Diaz, very good. Edgar, oh my God, fantastic. Then Kirby, very solid. Oh my God. This team knows how to win games, okay? It really does. Now the thing is, does it know how to win postseason games? Let's take a look. We're going to be facing LDS. We got the Reds coming in. Okay. And we're going to have Clayton Kershaw versus Ranger Suarez. Please tell me this is actually going to be the guy they put up. Kershaw, Suarez, game one. And we won that one. Perfect. Okay. Game two, Giolito versus John Means. Won that one as well. And then game three, Rodriguez versus Alcantara. Come on. Lost that one by one. Come on, dude. Really? Game four, Alvarez, Tanaka. This is actually going to get a little bit scary because Henderson did not do as good as last year. But let's see if he's still a good postseason pitcher. Come on. And he is. Perfect. Okay. Four to two. On to the next series. Wipe the sweat off a little bit because I got a little nerve wracking, but let's keep this thing going. And I'll see us time once again versus Arizona. Clayton Kershaw versus Brandon Woodruff for game one. Lost that one, actually. Okay. Let's try to rebound. Lucas G lead over Trevor Bauer. Won that one. Okay, perfect. Game three, Rodriguez versus Marcus Stroman. Come on. There we are. Nine to one. My God. Just had a day right there. Henderson Alvarez versus Pablo Lopez for game four. Lost that one. Okay, it's two to two. Kershaw versus Caleb Smith. Are you kidding me? I swear to God, a Caleb Smith beats us. I don't know what I'm going to do, but it's not going to be good. Kershaw, come on. We got bested by Caleb Smith, by the way. The guy went eight innings. The guy couldn't hit the broadside of a freaking barn when he pitched for us, but all of a sudden he pitches eight innings of pretty much shutout ball against one of the best offenses in the entire MLB as of right now. Come on. Either way, Giolito, Woodruff, come on. There we are. And then game seven, Kenta Maeda versus Trevor Bauer. This has got to be huge right here. All right, this is for all the marbles, literally. We're trying to win back-to-back -back World Series. This is it right here. Game seven, NLCS. Kenta, I need you to be on your A game, my dude. I don't know the last time you pitched in the playoffs, probably last year, but still. I need you to channel that inner 2020 playoff push, okay? Let's go. And we lost. Oh my God. Not exactly channeling the inner 2020 pitcher that I thought I was channeling. Yeah, had a 12.46 ERA. Love to see that, dude. Love to see it. Well, the stupid Diamondbacks finally bested us. I swear to God, they lose and they actually lost. Okay, really? How good are the Twins actually looking? Because I swear to God, if we would have beat them, I'm going to be a little upset. Let's see. And wow. Yeah, there's no chance. There's absolutely no chance. They had Ronald Acuna Jr., Severino, Strasburg, Presley, Jorge Polanco. I'll give it to them. Okay, I'll definitely give it to them. Wow. In all honesty, I think they should have been the guys going back to back, but it's fine. I'm just glad I got one. And I'll be honest here. I normally like don't exactly say the highest of praises to and will be the show, at least for franchise. Because in my opinion, the franchise like AI and everything like that does kind of suck a little bit. That's why we see things like the Pirates signing Mookie Betts, like Francisco Lindor, all these crazy guys in one franchise. The kind of stuff that doesn't make sense was the kind of stuff that I was thinking was going to go into this team. It turns out this team was beautiful. I mean, granted, we made a couple good trades, but still a majority, a overwhelming majority, I might add, was all drafted by Emily be the show so i gotta give it to them they drafted a pretty solid team round of applause though to their ai real quick because that was pretty solid they drafted a pretty solid team but sadly we couldn't go for back to back it definitely sucks but at least we won the first one and in both of the years we finished off over 100 wins so you love to see that as well and as a gm our record's looking pretty nice i think 201 wins and 123 losses that's actually real nice for us and that makes us look fantastic even though we really didn't do a single thing pretty much but either way i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you guys want to see more videos like this leave a like on it comment that down below and also, if you guys have not already hit that sub button, it really mean a lot. We're trying to go for 50K by the end of the year. I've said that so many times, but we got about five months left. And I think we could definitely get about what? What is that? I think 17K in five months. I think we could definitely do that. I just need a lot of your guys' help. So if you guys have not already, seriously, hit that sub button. It really does mean a lot. And that's pretty much going to be it for me today. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Stay safe. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.